My name is Julia Patrick and I'm Ukrainian. We are under attack of Russia and I am um, currently in Kiev. I didn't leave this, the city, uh, but it is rumored that it's going to be hot this night as it is expected that they will be shelling tonight. It's March 1st, 2022. I'm in Washington, D.C. on a Zoom call with Julia in Ukraine. She was introduced to me through Facebook Messenger by a mutual Ukrainian colleague and friend. I've been offering Ukrainians our D.C. radio platform to share their experiences and to voice their needs to you during the Putin-Russian invasion of their country, their home. It's 9 p.m. in Ukraine, and Julia's video camera is on during our call, but all I could see is darkness with occasional shadowed movements catching the reflection of the light from her screen. Julia apologizes and explains why she can't turn her lights on. Turn on lights and not to attract like spies or yeah. strategic objects or shooting. Yeah. Okay. So I'm here. Actually, my camera is on. Yeah. yeah. But it's dark. Okay. Yeah. No, no problem. And this is the best time for, for us to be able to meet for you. Yeah. Actually, so far it's quiet. No alarm. If I hear it, I need to go to a shelter. But so far it's quiet and uh, actually we spend nights there. That's why like probably in 30 minutes I'll be there. So yeah, it's very okay right okay. now. Okay, good. And please feel free to just end the call if you need to or go do what you need to do, okay? Yeah, thank you. As you know, this recording is for our DC radio show, Wit and Reason. And we usually talk about mental health and wellness. And we really inspire our listeners to be involved in not only their own mental health and wellness, but also the wellness of their community members and neighbors, including when it comes to global affairs. And mm -hmm. so I really appreciate you taking this time right now to meet with me and and to share your experiences with us. I was wondering if you could start off by describing what the environment is like for you right now. I, I can say that actually I have dubious feelings about it. But on one hand, I'm very proud of what the whole nation is doing. At the same time, my 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 heart can't stand the pain and everything that we are going through right now. Um, what I can say for sure is that the family, the, the, the whole nation is very united. Uh, currently, my conversation is interrupted by sounds. That's like notifications from multiple chats when people are united on the same mission, like people volunteer for different purposes. Uh, before the war, I was, um, actually, I'm still the PR manager, and uh, I used to teach international PR and communications. And we united our efforts with my ex-students, with my colleagues, with everybody who is indifferent to help international media with the coverage of what's going on here. And it actually helps at least understanding that you do some value, that you help, that you provide correct information, not to mislead other people about what's going on here. It really helps. But I, I'm sure that your listeners uh, are aware of what's going on. And I don't know, like, to what extent we can bear it. Because for human souls, that's, like, unbearable. Yeah. And what do you think has been the most unbearable aspect of all of this for you? Or the mm. combination of it all? Challenging. First of all, we were unprepared. Despite the fact that Russia has been military aggressive to Ukraine for 
eight years already, starting with Crimea annexation. We were not ready that we would face this harsh war. I remember our conversations with friends. Have you heard that it is rumored that active military actions going to take place? And everybody shrugged their shoulders and said, that's never, never going to happen. He is just, uh, I don't know, playing his role. It, he's never going to invade. And a lot of people didn't leave the city, didn't leave their homes, stayed here, like in, in their hometowns, not uh, exactly in Kiev, but all over. Sorry, my, my phone is beeping. Everybody is exchanging messages. Yeah. And th- this is like, we were not prepared. There was just such, such a disbelief that Russia or that Putin would, would in Ukraine. And, and that even when there was rumors about it, Um, before this happened, it was dismissed. And so I'm wondering, like, from your experience, what do you think contributed to to that belief that something like this would never happen? Because I guess that in 2022, it's impossible just to... um, It's impossible to do business, I don't know, like to... Mm-hmm. to pronounce the word war like it's impossible in the era of diplomacy of multiple organizations of laws it's just impossible that's why it we we were like thrown to other reality without laws without any human approach without any logic like it it, it was impossible to grasp why what for like kids dying innocent civil people dying are suffering that's just insane just insane yeah yeah it, it's completely understandable why why there would be just such a disbelief that anything like this could happen in 2022 and i'm wondering like what is it like for for you or from what you hear for everyone else like trying to process this reality that that we're currently living in I would say that volunteering helps a lot. Once people get to safe locations, they like send messages like, hey, I've uh, like I'm in safety, I can work. What should I do? Like people help in all the possible directions, like providing food, providing warm clothes, providing help, like picking some food and bringing it to elder people. People like now people are very united. All political disagreements are gone. Everybody is thinking about one goal for the whole nation. It's our sovereignty, it's our independence, and of course, victory. Because like we didn't start that war. When we woke up with the sound of explosion in Kiev, in the capital, I, I remember that craziness. And I, I had to wake up my daughter saying, the war has begun. And uh, it, it, like since then, we've lived in nightmare. Uh, people, like, um, th- that's one side. We were unprepared to that, but you never get can be prepared for war. And now people spend days on the at the border it's so difficult to leave the country because shootings shellings are all over ukraine people can't properly get to places of their destinations a lot of uh, roads bridges are destroyed when you usually take let's say one hour to get somewhere you can spend up to 10 hours to get somewhere yeah like Families are separated. Men, I guess, 19, 60 years old can't Mm -hmm. leave the country as they need to do military service. And that's why, like, only uh, ladies, women with uh, kids leave. It's unbearable. And, of course, everything that Russia does on the territory, that's, like, devastating, heartbreaking, and stomach-turning. And and can you tell me about your daughter? How how old is she? She's seventeen. Okay. And is it 
currently? Is it just you and your daughter? Uh, no, my, my husband is with us. He is like not um, military trained, but he is doing his best in providing help to local security uh, because like people volunteer a lot. Mm-hmm. That's the call for duties, for your probably understanding what your homeland is. Mm-hmm. You can't even imagine how many people cherish so so he lost the call she said sorry before the call was lost and we will see if she'll be able to join us back again hi Julia. sorry that's okay yeah was the internet just interrupted or no i someone was uh, like my my friend uh, was uh, uh, on the road and it was uh, like she wanted to let me know that she arrived okay, yeah good. and she gave me a call and it was just uh, because of the call okay no no problem please feel free to just cut out take your calls as needed okay okay okay, okay. thank you I'm, I'm really glad you took that call and, and uh, your friend's okay where was your friend arriving to some other Ukrainian city, which is less under attack than Kiev. Okay. She has a kid, eight year old, dogs, cats with her. Wow. And she picked them up to bring there. So she hopes that it won't take her long to stay away from her house Mm. that's why yeah she she picked um, all the precious stuff she has and left yeah Yeah. and so right now it's you your husband and your 17 year old daughter and are are you staying in place in in your home is that where you've been yeah okay yeah this is uh, our home but we live like in multi-storied building yeah and luckily we have parking that serves as a bomb shelter. A lot of people stay in underground and we are really, really lucky that we can stay, which is in some place which is close to where we are. Yeah. And what floor are you on? Are, are you up above ground pretty high? Um, or Overall, a lot of there are 25 stories. And where are you located currently? In the uh, 20th. 20th. So what is your view like? Are you able to observe what's happening outside and actually my husband does i don't have time for that Uh i'm working on communicating with multiple media requests uh, everything that we may cover initiate pitch everything and i am just one and the same creature (laughs) with my phone that's why yeah like my husband is responsible for that yeah it sounds like you're able to put the skills that and resources that you had developed your entire life in pr and and media communications and in accuracy and broadcasting to good use during this war yes and absolutely and and so you're in communication with your students who are helping you with these efforts yeah yeah, and now they are contacting me all the time. Yeah. yeah, because we were distributing our tasks. Who is responsible for which part? And by the way, I guess that in two days, my new course was about like a new course with students. And in the morning, I got a message from one girl. Uh, she introduced herself on social media, and she said, "Julia, I was about to start your course in two days." Wow. She's also from Ukraine, yeah. but it's obvious that it's not going to happen. And she said, but I'm so proud of you as the teacher, as the mentor, that you do a lot for the country. I'm ready to help and I understand that I will teach through practice. Like she's yeah. ready to know everything like by doing st- uh, uh, tasks. Yeah, sorry. Like these no. days are very harsh. I'm not very focused. Yeah, but still, no, I'm that, doing my best. That's really incredible that both you and your husband are doing everything you can in your power to be able to provide support and aid for your country and everyone there. Do you mind if I ask how your daughter is doing? No, that's totally okay. She is, like I mentioned, that we distributed our roles in the family, who is responsible for what. As I'm totally uh, concentrated uh, on communications uh, and how I can 
help my country with my professional skills. So my husband is responsible for supply and security and safety. And my daughter is responsible uh, for communicating with the family. Because our families are currently staying in different um, corners of Ukraine, but in very dangerous parts of it. Uh, she is like in constant communication with them, at least when we can communicate. Uh, and she does the same for her university group. The students are scattered all over Ukraine and she is in touch with them asking how the night was, how the day is, what you are doing, what you hear, how you cope with it. Yesterday, one of her friends uh, had birthday. She spent the whole day in the bomb shelter. Uh, uh, so I, I know that she's very empathetic. And uh, the next day when the war, that unproclaimed war happened, one of my friends, I... I, I wouldn't say friends, but the person I know gave me a call asking to pick her 17-year-old girl daughter in Kiev because she was stuck here and she couldn't leave the city. And that uh, woman asked me to give her shelter. I said, no worries. Of course, it goes without saying she will stay with us. She will be safe. She will be okay. And the next day, some other people gave me a call and asked to pick their uh, relative of the same, pretty the same age. And my daughter said, Mom, I've read so many books on World War II when people gave shelters to Jewish people. I feel like we'd, we are doing the same. Like we gave shelter to those girls and they met each other for the first time, but they were sleeping together in the parking that serves as a bomb shelter then in the same bed and they said that we would never imagine that we would meet just each other under such conditions mm -hmm. under such circumstances but luckily uh, those girls are with their moms already we managed to organize logistics a uh, safe one to bring them home and they are okay right now so it, it really helps like when people interact support each other so you feel like you are doing some human mission on earth it, it must be really useful to be able to have means of communication at this point to have internet to be able to connect with your loved ones and to even just be able to share information across with your students and with your community members. How is everyone communicating these days? What do you all find the most reliable? Actually, we have a list of reliable resources. And um, I shared it on my Facebook, how the screens of most Ukrainians look like now. We have notifications on our phones about air rights, air strikes. Mm -hmm. And it happens if, if you like monitor the whole Ukraine, not just your city, but as I mentioned, our families are in different uh, areas, different regions. Mm -hmm. It can happen every five, seven minutes. And you like see those notifications now and then, like Kharkiv, you are in danger. Kiev in danger, Zaporizhia in danger, and it happens all over and all over. And I don't know when it's gonna stop. Yeah, so like our uh, to today, actually, TV tower fired by the Russian invaders, and uh, we we are not, we don't have access to TV, but they promise that it's temporal, that it will be somehow fixed shortly okay and how but before that i mean like did you all have tv and and radio as, as means to to gather news or was it mostly online and and through the app notification i i would say it depends on the age and social status of the person of course like uh, young people trust and rely mostly on internet people of more senior age like my parents they would watch tv and get all the news from the tv mm -hmm. yeah so i i luckily yeah we have all the 
passengers, all the websites working. We have a list of trusted resources that we can trust. But, you know, once on Twitter, such a message, we know now like how uh, the World War II coverage would be if people had social media mm-hmm. back then. Because everybody is posting pictures, streaming, showing what's going on. So Russian propaganda is mm-hmm. beaten. Yeah. yeah, because, yeah, it's, it's revealed. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you, you, you can't hide the facts. Uh, people are witnessing things. And uh, the turnover on, of information is very fast. Yes, there's so much power in information and in media yeah. and communications. And I'm just so glad that at the very least, you all aren't technologically isolated from everything that's happening in Ukraine and around the world and, and that you're able to, to catch and challenge the propaganda that, that you may be trying to... to yeah, see. that that helps a lot. Yeah. And, and so what is the, what's the airstrike notification? Is that an app or automatically on, on your phone? Actually, the, those are notifications from um, Telegram channels. Okay. Yeah, so like media outlets, they have different ways to communicate with people. And the fastest way uh, to communicate is definitely Telegram, not Twitter, not Facebook, not uh, Instagram. So those updates happen every three minutes or even faster. Yeah, and like those notifications are visible for Telegram users. Yeah, Um, and then I... What has it been like for you as a mom and as a wife and family member, community member? What has all of this been like for you? Like today, I post uh, a story of my life, of my past five or six days, and don't even count the days that we've been going. In the parking, we don't have connection, like no internet. And that's the time for me at least to get thoughts together uh, because I'm not disturbed by messages, everything. And uh, I have that break in my work. And I started it with the words that my heart turned black. So my heart is not red anymore. And um, it's, it's, I would say, a big test for resilience, for coping with stress. And that's why I would say that now even my daughter takes more care of me rather than I take care of her. So I know she's by my side, that we are together, but she is responsible for feeding me. So she said, mom, it's the right time to eat. Take a break. Go and get some food. Lost the connection again. Probably got another call. So we'll stand by. There we go. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Was the call okay? Yeah. Everyone's fine. We were talking about your experiences. Yeah. Yeah, that my daughter is taking care of me. Yeah. And she treats it very, like, in a very responsible way. Like, mom, this is time for you to take a break and get some food. Mom, you haven't drunk water. Please take care of yourself because currently my attention is focused on my contribution to communications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but I know that uh, for now we are safe and we are together that gives more power, more strength to oppose everything. What has it been like for for you all in your home for making sure your basic needs are met, like food and water? And how's that been holding up for you? Where, where yeah, you- for for now it's it's okay. Like my husband is responsible for supplying us with water, with food. It's you know, actually it's available for now. I don't know how it's gonna be even tomorrow, even in an hour. But for now, yeah, everything we might need, we have, luckily. And, uh, you know, like, I, I read those stories that women give birth to babies in mm, bomb shelters these days. And I can't even imagine how impossible it is even to 
like have that experience to give birth in the underground station, for example, or in a bomb shelter. And I say in, in such cases that I have really luxurious uh, way of um, spending my time because uh, I don't need to give birth or I know that a lot of people can't get medical services right now mm -hmm. because all the doctors work on on surgery for the wounded, not for the people who might need it. And it's a curfew that you can't, uh, for example, like uh, the weekend, the, the, the past weekend, the whole weekend was curfew. You can't leave the house. So if there is some urgency, you can't leave the house just for safety matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it so. a, a, a citywide curfew? That, that yeah, it's like citywide. That? And yeah, that was put in for your government, for your safety? Yeah, it's for safety because like they know about the plans of uh, Russians uh, and that's why to keep people safe, they uh, like impose that curfew. And I remember that in Kharkiv, people were going to get some water and got shot. That's why, yeah, it, it's totally, it makes sense. Yeah. And do you mind if I ask about your husband's schedule? I know it seems mm -hmm. like he's the one who does need to leave the building to, to help provide for you and your daughter and to make sure you're safe. What's that mm -hmm. been like for him? How's that for you? I would say that he is less emotional than I am. And he serves as some support when I start panicking in some way. He said, everything going to be good. And he is very, I wouldn't say calm because it's impossible to stay calm. But at least he, he is not that emotional as I can be. And he says, believe me, we are strong. We have a very strong army. And sometimes you need to listen to it. I even forbid, forbade our relatives to share some really like scary information, like Russian troops are entering the city. I said, we are all on that news. Please stop sharing it because it gives like extra worries because everybody is uh, so worried, is, is nervous, is scared. That's obvious. And uh, my husband is the center of concentration and probably, I don't know, he's like... Uh, uh, mental health, yeah, <laughs> probably that would be the best definition. Yeah, so it seems like he's maintaining an optimistic outlook that things are, and focusing on the strengths of Ukraine, and seems hopeful that things are going to be well and that everyone's going to be safe. Yeah, I, I would say that we are all optimistic, that's for sure. But sometimes you just can't stand the burden of those emotions like sometimes it's anger sometimes it's rage sometimes it's despair sometimes it's fear but despite all of them we are optimistic as i keep saying that we are on our land we are in our country we are like defending what belongs to us that's why we will we gonna win for sure no doubts yeah and what really helps me is that at the end of the day, I can go to Twitter and, and see uh, jokes. Actually, yeah, it, 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 like jokes on the situation. I don't get any other jokes because like my life turned to be like life during war. I, I got irritated by advertising of some sneakers uh, or some events or some tours to Mont Blanc. Like, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. But uh, when there are jokes, uh, like good irony on the situation, I really take screenshots to, to support me uh, when I'm in the shelter without uh, connection without uh, internet i look through those jokes and uh, yeah it, it makes me feel better yes oh that is such a smart idea to take a screenshot so that way you still have something to swipe through that brings you yeah joy. 
when you don't have an internet connection when you're down in the garage. Yeah. And yeah. What was really like new habit is that I guess that after three days of this nightmare, mm-hmm. I managed to take a shower. Mm, I was mass- texting to my friend saying, hey, I, I, I want to go to take a shower, but I'm afraid that once I am undressed, there will be like serene, yeah, like uh, alarm. And she said, don't worry. Usually um, showers, like those like showers, places, sites, the safest place in the house because it has walls near it and it calmed me down. So I managed to take a shower And uh, it was the first time when I saw myself in the mirror, like after three days. And I I took a brush, like, seriously, I I needed it on a daily basis. But now three days passed and I never used it. Then I took like a, a jar of cream, like face cream. Oh, my God. Like I coped with it without it for three days already. I, too, I, I I saw a washing machine and seriously, I knew how to use it. Uh, then I saw like being with recycled stuff, like f- with stuff for recycling. And like, oh my God, it was my previous life when I recycled stuff. Now it doesn't matter. Everything is smeared with war. Like now we need to <sighs> provide help for people who are in need and you don't take care how you look, whether you sort the garbage, it it just doesn't matter. You're in a crisis and survival mode at at this point. You were at least for the first three days and obviously it's continued since then. What was it like for you to finally look at yourself in the mirror and take a shower and, and notice all those common experiences that you had in your day-to-day life three days after this started Mm -hmm. what was that like for you it was very unusual it I had a feeling that it happened not to me I would say that probably two weeks before it started I had uh, I I I got on a quick trip weekend trip to Paris Mm -hmm. And now I think that it was just in my dream. It never happened because it's totally different life right now. Yeah, it's like another, it's a completely other life, at least for right now. And I know that everyone there is not just hopeful, but it seems like sure, they are assured that you will have that life back again, or at least a life that, that you want to create for yourself now that everything's been Put into perspective in this way. Uh, as you work through this, what is it that that we could do out here in the states? Our our listeners, if is there any way that they can try to support you and your work, your efforts, Ukraine, and any? Um, I would say, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Actually, like sometimes people feel uncomfortable about asking someone. But yesterday, when I heard the sound of explosion and my husband saw the light caused by that explosion and we heard that our windows, I wouldn't say they they didn't break, but they were like under pressure. So it it was very um, like we, we felt it inside the apartment. Then we were rushed to the shelter. I was there like I was um, going upstairs a bit to catch internet and I was like sending words of um, pledging asking people to support like in any possible way Mm -hmm. to donate to the army to donate to refugees to donate to kids in Ukraine to spread out the word to share the hashtags just to grow awareness of what's happening in the center of Europe with my country, with a sovereign country that didn't invade any country. We want our land. We don't need any other's country land. We are like, what we want to do is to build our country thriving. 
And yesterday I was like in despair. I was like sending those, the internet was so bad, so slow, but I was sending and sending and asking, please support, do what you can. I guess that at this point, people can just make a pause think what's comfortable for them to do. Yeah, not everybody is comfortable to donate to the army. That's okay. Uh, But unfortunately, we have to defend. But still, if a person feels that he, she is fine with donating to refugee centers or to uh, spread the word, that's okay. Like any help is appreciated. And I ask from the bottom of my heart, from the, of my black heart, from the bottom of like hearts of all the Ukrainians to help, to support, to spread the word, to grow awareness of what's going on right now. That's like just heartbreaking. <laughs> Thank you so much. And just so we know, so we could keep in contact with you and and check in to see how you're doing and your daughter and your husband. Is it okay if if we share any of your social media platforms? Uh, Yeah, I I, I will follow you up uh, giving a social media platform that uh, can be shared. Yeah. And then will you be staying where you're currently located now or or do you and your family plan on moving or? Mm, For now, we're staying. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Julia. We really appreciate it. And we're going to um, we're gonna keep track of, of all of the communication you're sharing and, and help you push that out, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. You have a, a safe night today, okay? I'll do my best. And then, Julia, if it's okay with your daughter, if you could give her a big hug. Uh, I will. I will. Actually, today, it's probably the sixth or the seventh day of these events. And uh, my husband approached me and said, let's kiss. Yes. Because we, we, we didn't kiss during this time. And like, oh, my God, what, is, what is a kiss? For six or seven days, yeah. Yeah, what is a kiss? <laughs> Take those moments, uh, okay? Yeah, I I wish everybody never experienced what we are going through. Yeah. Never. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. From DC Radio, this is Wit and Reason, and I'm Dr. Alexis. Please visit witandreason.com slash DC Radio to access the links Julia shared with us. I would like to also encourage you to subscribe to our show on Apple Podcast and YouTube or follow us on social media at Wit and Reason. We'll be sharing more interviews with Ukrainians who are determined to connect with you and to share how you can help and support during this time. Let's keep the conversation going.